Hey guys, it's Mrs. Olenichek, and today we're going to talk about protein synthesis, um, which is just a fancy way of saying making proteins. So how do proteins get made in your cells? Um, so all of your cells contain DNA, um, and DNA is basically just instructions on how to build proteins. It tells you what order to put amino acids in, uh, and when you have a long chain of amino acids, that's essentially a protein. Um, a gene is a section or a piece of DNA that codes for a chain of amino acids or a polypeptide. We used to say it was one gene, one polypeptide, uh, one gene, one protein, but really it's one gene, one polypeptide because some proteins are made up of multiple chains, but basically it's one gene, codes for a protein. Um, and these proteins help build cells and eventually bodies. Um, DNA gets all the glory, we pay a lot of attention to it, but proteins are what really do the work. But that's really why your DNA is important because it tells you how to build you. Um, so proteins, if you remember, they basically run living organisms. They are enzymes which control all the chemical reactions and they make up the majority of your structures. Um, and so that's why we say they're important, and they're what give you the traits, those things that make you, you. Um, in terms of biology, the central dogma or the central idea um, of modern biology um, is that you have DNA, which serves as a blueprint, so an instruction manual. Um, and that DNA that lives in the nucleus has to be transcribed or copied into something called mRNA. Um, and we call that process transcription. Um, and this happens in the nucleus and the messenger RNA is basically your working copy. You don't want to mess up your original and so you make a copy and we call that transcription. Um, and then translation is going from messenger RNA to protein that happens out in the cytoplasm um, and it requires the messenger RNA as well as something called a ribosome um, and transfer RNA, which is another type of RNA. Um, and those proteins are what give you your traits and again are what make you, you. So let's review some of the differences between DNA and RNA. So DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid has deoxyribose. Um, you have AT, CG, base pairing, um, and it's a double-stranded molecule. Um, RNA, on the other hand, is made up of ribose sugar. So instead of deoxyribose, you have ribonucleic acid that has ribose as its sugar. Um, the bases that are present are GCA, which is the same, but instead of T, you have a U. So basically, anywhere would you, where you'd want to put a T, you're going to put a U instead. Um, and it's a single-stranded molecule. Um, I always remember Sloth from the Goonies and AU guys. Um, there's three main types of RNA, at least RNA that we're going to talk about. There's messenger RNA, which is mRNA, and basically that's your working copy of a gene. Ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, um, which is what helps make ribosomes, and transfer RNA, or tRNA, which transfers or transports amino acids. Um, you can see all three of those here, and this is kind of that whole process outlined, um, not to scale. <laughs> so here's your DNA, it gets copied, um, you end up with RNA, um, this goes out into the cytoplasm where it meets up with a ribosome and some transfer RNAs to build a protein. Um, so let's start with transcription. Transcription is really just copying a template plate strand of DNA, so one of your double strands. Um, you match bases, A to U, G to C, um, and the enzyme involved here is going to be RNA polymerase. Um, you're going to notice that this is pretty similar to what you saw in DNA replication, um, except for here you're only copying one side um, and you have some different bases. 
you also, the enzyme is RNA polymerase instead of DNA polymerase. The RNA polymerase is going to bind to something called a promoter region, kind of like a promoter for a club that says, hey, come over here and bind. Um, there's places on certain genes that say, hey, come over here and make a copy of me. And so the RNA polymerase is going to bind there, and then it just makes a copy of that section of DNA. Um, you'll see here that your mRNA is going to match up. So if you have a T, you're going to want an A. An A gets a U, a C gets a G, G gets a C, and so on. Um, and you probably want to practice this a little bit. In your homework, you have a few sections of DNA, and you're going to go through the process just to practice, make sure that you can kind of do this without thinking too much about it. Um, your mRNA strands are then read by the ribosome and you build your proteins. So this first process of going from DNA to messenger RNA, remember, is called transcription and that's going to happen in the nucleus. Um, the next process is going to happen out in the cytoplasm. So that was transcription and now we're going to look at translation. So you have your ribosome, your messenger RNA, your transfer RNA, and eventually you get your protein, which then results in your traits. Um, so the messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus because it can't do anything in there. Um, it goes, it finds a ribosome. So that ribosome can be free floating in the cytoplasm or attached to your endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and essentially, the messenger RNA acts like instructions on how to put together amino acids. Um, and we call that process translation. So when you read your messenger RNA code, you read it in these three letter words we call codons. Um, so each of these represents a codon and it codes for a particular amino acid. So in this case you have AUG and it codes for something called MET, that's your start codon. And these are going to be um, abbreviations for the amino acid. So CGU, you have ARG, VAL, and so on. Um, so we call those words, those three letter messenger RNA codes, codons. Um, and we actually have a chart it's a really nifty chart that you can use to figure out exactly what is being called for. So like I said, if you have AUG, so A, U, and then G, that codes for start. It means start here. Um, you also have some stop codons. And you find that this code, this chart, you can use this no matter what organism you're looking at. It can be a bacteria, a fungus a plant, a human, we all use the exact same code, um, which is really, really strong evidence for the fact that we're all related if you go back far enough. Um, there are a lot of duplicates. Um, so you'll see here that CUU, CUC, CUA, CUG, they all code for leucine or LEU. Um, this actually is kind of good because it's like mutation insurance. Um, and so there's a lot of repeats in the code. So if you mess up and instead of writing CUU, you write CUC, it's not going to have any impact on the amino acid. Um, again, you have your start codons and your stop codons. Um, and start means start, stop means stop. So now you have your transfer RNA coming in. Transfer RNA matches up, so here you have your AUG, well you'll have on a tRNA a UAC, so A to U, U to A, G to C, um, that will match up, and they will continue to do this. We call those three letter words on the tRNA anticodons. Um, now if you want to pause me and then go check out this animation that'll go through kind of 
the process of translation and so you can see it in action. I'll go into a little bit more detail on the parts of the ribosome and how um, the messenger RNA is, RNA is being read. And so put me on pause. Go check out this link um, and answer the questions on your worksheet about it. Welcome back. So now we're going to talk about Today we looked at how you go from a gene to a protein. Um, so again, you have your DNA, codes for messenger RNA. We call that transcription. Messenger RNA essentially codes for a protein or a polypeptide. Um, so you have a ribosome, and we call that process translation. So the ribosome with your transfer RNA that drops off amino acids. Um, and then goes back to pick new ones up. And you build your protein. Eventually that protein leads to traits, and those traits are what make you who you are. So when we look at genetics, it's important to understand that DNA is what determines your traits because it determines what proteins you're going to have. Um, so here's a review, transcription, DNA, I mean RNA polymerase, builds DNA, I mean builds RNA, <laughs> um, translation, your ribosomes read the messenger RNA and with the help of some transfer RNA build proteins or polypeptides. Um, and here's kind of an overview of the whole process. So your messenger RNA has the code it carries that code from the nucleus out into the cytoplasm where it attaches to a ribosome. Um, the anticodon on the tRNA binds to the codon on the messenger RNA. Um, and the ribosome starts linking those amino acids together and separating them from the tRNA. So it's building peptide bonds between amino acids to form a long polypeptide chain that are known as a protein. Um, this all stops when you hit the stop codon. So here's just another diagram of the process. Um, you should familiarize yourself with these types of diagrams and you should be comfortable with labeling these so you may want to draw this for yourself. Um, I always find drawing things helps me to remember. Um, so make sure to check out these animations. Um, the first one is kind of an overview and then you have the V-cell animations. This one focuses on translation. Um, the transcription one is a little bit complicated. Um, and then here's another good one that has overview of the whole process. Make sure you write down any questions you've had and feel free to ask about them in class. We will be doing a lot of practice with this process, um, but if there was something that didn't make sense or some vocabulary that you want me to go over in more detail, please make sure you ask about it in class. Alright, thanks. Bye.